Okay. Are we live? <laughs> We're live. <laughs> Hi, Charlene. How are you? Hi, Dr. Eva. I'm great. How are you? So good to see you. So good to see you. And thank you so much for uh, thank you. joining today. We were supposed to do this last week, but then there was a, a time change, summertime changes. And um, yeah, anyway, we are here today. I, yeah, I think the daylight savings thing always kind of messes us up. Maybe they'll eliminate it and then our problems will be solved. But um, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. OK, so, you know, um, my. I think a pri primarily uh, most of my audience are women who are 35 to 45 plus right now. And, you know, we just want to do everything we can to obviously um, conceive easily, have a healthy baby, maintain our own health. But there's just so many mixed messages right now. Um, so I want to talk to you about uh, information that's um, on the internet. We're all, you know, searching Google for, you know, what can improve a quality, uh, what to do when we have low AMH. Is that when we rush to IVF? Um, what about taking DHEA that's um, been talked about to really improve our egg quality? And so mm -hmm. I, I, I want to know, like, is there, you know, kind of some recipe that we should be all following to improve this egg quality. So the, the discussions about egg quality, essentially, and how do we improve it at, at, at any age to have a, um, you know, have a healthy baby? Have a healthy baby. Absolutely. I, I think that's a great question. And I think that, um, you know, if there was an age where there is like a cutoff, um, then no one would be getting pregnant anymore after that point but given the fact that there's still women who do get pregnant and give birth to healthy babies with their own eggs in their 40s mid 40s even late 40s sometimes as late as 50 um, tells us that you know there are other factors which are playing a big role and it's important to understand what could be contributing to your poor egg quality uh, and not just say, oh, it's my age. Um, you know, that that's a very disempowering answer. Um, it doesn't really tell you anything, nor does it give you anything um, to do about it. So age should only be celebrated, in my opinion. And when it comes to egg quality, um, there are certain um, things that you can do to help improve your... Um, maturation of the eggs because you're while you're born with all of your egg cells they're in their primordial form which means they're not in the form in which you ovulate them in they have to undergo a 120 day maturation process um, during which two sets of meiosis take place or so the cellular division and if the egg has abnormal number of chromosomes it's because something didn't go right in those two sets of meiosis in those 120 days prior to ovulation. So we are focusing on that period of four months, um, which is the duration of egg maturation to provide your body with all of the factors, all of the nutrients it needs to produce healthy eggs. And we are also minimizing the exposure to factors which have been shown to have a negative impact. So most women, uh, on this journey are familiar that, you know, things like caffeine, coffee, alcohol, smoking, uh, recreational drugs, trans fats, high um, sugar diet, um, diet high in refined carbs, um, low fruit intake, low veg intake is not the best thing. So mm -hmm. most women are aware of that. One thing that um, people need to be aware of is that following very strict diets like a vegan diet or paleo diet or keto diet or, um, you know, whichever diet that's very restrictive is not always the best for egg quality. Um, so for, for the optimal egg quality, you need to have good quality fats and good quality protein in your diet. Um, and specifically nutrients A, D, K2 and E. So these are all fat-soluble nutrients and they come from 
animal sources. You won't find these nutrients in plant forms in the way that the body needs them. So it's important to combine, if you are vegan or vegetarian, that you do get these nutrients from supplements and that um, you are taking them into consideration. Um, so when it comes to egg maturation, what's also very important are your mitochondria. Mitochondria are cellular engines and they provide the energy for the cellular division of um, the egg cell. So if your mitochondria are slow because you've been you know, exposing yourself to lots of endocrine disruptors or certain chemicals which had a negative impact on your overall health or you have a history of high use of antibiotics, then your mitochondria can be slow because mitochondria originally developed from the bacteria, the primitive bacteria that we had on this planet. And as because of this bacterial um, ancestry, they're very sensitive to antibiotics. So if you've taken lots of antibiotics um, in the course of your life, then it could be that that exposure has also slowed down the mitochondria. So it's important to nourish the mitochondria with ubiquinol or CoQ10. Um, and again, good quality fats, good quality proteins uh, play a huge role here. Um, so the other nutrients like vitamin A are really important for egg quality. And a lot of women are afraid of taking vitamin A because they feel that if I take vitamin A, um, I'm going to be at a higher risk of um, having a, a baby with certain deformities. Now, what many people are not aware of is that vitamin A in its natural form, as it's occurring in cod liver oil or in liver, is not actually dangerous for you. It's only the synthetic form of vitamin A that can cause these issues. So um, I would be very cautious about taking vitamin A in its synthetic form, and you should not exceed 10,000 international units anyway. But if it's in its natural form, you, you don't have to worry about it. So a lot of vitamin A supplements also come in the form of cod liver oil uh, or extractions from cod liver oil. Um, the other thing to mention about um, good egg quality is, is your methylation and knowing your genetic polymorphisms. Some people simply cannot absorb uh, B12 and folic acid, even though their blood work may show that the levels are quite even high. Um, just because the levels are high doesn't mean that those levels in serum are the same as the levels that are getting absorbed into the red cell, so in the tissue itself. So um, if, you know, if you don't know which form of B12 or which form of folic acid you need to take, you can still be deficient in those nutrients even though you're supplementing with it. So sometimes some additional tests are required. It's not just about taking all of the supplements and going, okay, check mark, I'm, I'm taking all my egg support supplements. Um, you have mentioned um, AMH. So yeah, AMH is a, is a big concern for many women because the older you are, the lower your AMH is, and that's how it should be. Because the older the woman, the more she has exhausted her ovarian pool. So AMH is important for IVF, but AMH is not important for natural conception. Um, if your AMH is lower, you we, we have seen some increase in AMH after um, after uh, a, a woman has followed a program and has cleaned up her diet and lifestyle and has introduced some supplements that were um, tailored to her individual needs, but it's not going to be a huge increase. So mm -hmm. AMH is a marker of egg quantity. It's not a marker of egg quality. FSH is a much better marker of egg quality, and the ideal FSH is around 5. So um, that should be more your focus. And FSH is something that you can address very easily with certain herbs and certain nutrients. Um, 
Also, I'd like to mention that, you know, at the time of menopause, a woman still has anywhere between 500 to 1,000 eggs, which will never develop. So you go into menopause not because you run out of eggs, but because of the breakdown of the communication between the pituitary gland in the brain and the ovaries. So don't feel like that if your AMH is low that you only have three eggs left and, you know, by the time it's June, you're, you're going to start menopause. It doesn't really work like that. Um, DHEA. Um, so DHEA, I know, is is being used, um, you know, almost like vitamin C these days um, in many countries. And here in Switzerland, you can't buy it as a supplement. And in most EU countries, you cannot purchase it as a supplement because it is a hormone. And I think we need to respect that. Um, that it is a hormone. It's not just a nutrient. It's a mother hormone, which the body can convert into anything it wants, depending on what it needs. And a lot of women take it because IVF clinics use it. Now, studies have shown that in an IVF setting, the HEA is very good um, use short term, no longer than six weeks. And in general, you shouldn't take the HEA for more than six weeks. Um, to boost the, you know, the, the egg quality and to get the response they're wanting with the stimulation drugs. So for that, it's great. But in a, in a natural conception context, they haven't seen the same benefits and same results. In fact, what I have observed and my um, colleagues have also observed is that in many women, DHEA can convert to testosterone rather than to estrogen. And if that happens your period can become quite scanty, can become irregular. Um, the blood flow can become also quite jelly-like and you can start getting facial hair and other, um, you know, acne, uh, more sort of aggression, irritability. So these are all signs of androgens, male hormones. And that's not exactly what you want because too many androgens can make the surface of the ovary harder, which makes it even more difficult to ovulate. So I think, um, yeah, be mindful with the HEA. Don't just take it because you've read on Google it's good for fertility and for egg quality. Sure it is, and in some women it works, but I think um, its use needs to be decided on very individually based on, you know, the, con the, the whole um, case, the case analysis, and, yeah, in the context of everything you're seeing. I mean, thanks for bringing that up. I'm not trying to conceive, but um, I have been tested. My DHEA is low. And so I was supplementing with it and kind of forgot. And I was just getting these deep cystic things under my skin. My, you know, my menses changed and it was like, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, I just, I kind of had forgotten. Like I just threw that into the mix of supplements I was taking. So it is very powerful. And if you do not need it it can create real problems for you right um yeah. now i wanted to ask you because i i i have no idea that is anyone watching us i i don't really have any questions or anything coming in on, on my sides i'm hoping but people will watch the recording so i'm fine because um eva will be addressing questions um live yeah. in the last few minutes but what i wanted to ask you is gosh um in in treating fertility cases uh, now, have you noticed um, a change in, I guess, kind of what people are presenting with these days? Um, I, I've, de I've definitely noticed a huge change. So tell me what, what you're kind of seeing. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I've noticed that the cases have become more complex. Um, I've noticed that the age where women are starting families has shifted um, to an older age. And uh, we are seeing more autoimmune issues. We're seeing other issues with chronic infections, which people can't shift. Um, on top of that, that there is more toxicity, um, there are also more nutrient deficiencies and male factor infertility is quite on the rise. In fact, now we are seeing it almost in every single case. Um, and the, the, the problem there is that um, if the sperm quality is poor, the egg cell is going to try to fix the sperm. 
And in doing so, the egg cell can lose some of its nutrients, the egg cell can lose some of its energy, which then means that the embryo quality is not um, as good and there is a higher risk of a miscarriage. So it's really important that if you are a couple of advanced age for fertility, that you are addressing both the egg health and the sperm health. And um, that is, um, you know, part of the complexity that we're seeing today. But definitely, um, you know, I think people also have more stress. I think life has become more demanding. And, on, you know, we've all just lived through the pandemic, um, which was very stressful in itself um, and all, all the stresses it brought with it um, and it challenged our immune systems and health. I believe pretty much everyone has now had corona in some shape or form. Um, and some people are noticing the long COVID effects. So it's, it's, it's just one of the elements, but yeah, overall, I would say the, um, the, the, Cases are becoming more complex and require a lot of the times more than just taking the supplements, cutting out coffee, gluten, dairy, alcohol, and doing it for three months, you know, four months, which is kind of what was enough at the start when we started back in 2007, 2008, you know, just fewer smaller tweaks were enough to get the results you're after. Now it's, it's requiring more, it's requiring genetic analysis, further tests, um, hidden infections, you know, genet so yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot more complex. I mean, the, the, the thing that I um, kind of always emphasize is, of course, the, what, what our, our real desire is, we want to have a family or, or we want to add to a family. But what happens in this process is that you are able to really address sometimes very chronic, serious illness that um, would have often been ignored to the point then you get to a time in your life, you just can't ignore it anymore. It, it does show up and rear its ugly head. So it's, it's really a beautiful thing that um, because you have such a passion to have a family that you're able to truly take care of yourself and nurture yourself in a way that maybe life would not allow you or you would not allow. You're like, I'm so busy. I'm doing this. I'm not getting knocked down by anything. But we're yeah. we're seeing it in these sometimes, hopefully, earlier stages um, mm. of these autoimmune disorders and things like that. Okay, now I get to finally do this. You know, really take care of myself because I want to have mm -hmm. be able to maintain a pregnancy and be a healthy parent. And that's you know, I I, I love that because um, really for me. Um, yes, I want people to have a healthy baby, but it, it, it's a real like passion um, to help women just be healthier, um, mm -hmm. truly, truly, you know, healthy, um, because without our health, we, we really don't have anything. Yes, you know, it, it's women and men, really. And yes. I often like to use the canary in the mine um, symbol for infertility because I really feel and in case you know people are not familiar with it back in the olden days uh, when miners went to the mines they used to take a canary um, in a cage and as soon as it would stop singing they knew that either there was not enough oxygen or there was some gas coming out or something um, and they all had to get out so they had to leave and if you are faced with infertility, it's extremely painful and frustrating, but at the same time, it's giving you the opportunity to really uncover why, why is this happening? Um, and oftentimes people discover they have some autoimmunity going on, or they have a toxicity, or they have certain genetic polymorphism, which if left unaddressed could have predisposed them to cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, heart disease, and, you know, I often wonder if these diseases of old age are actually unaddressed issues, um, mm. systemic issues um, that have to do with genetic polymorphisms, toxicities, inability to detox properly, deficiency in certain key nutrients because you're not able to absorb them. So um, it's really also very fascinating to see where it can take us 
when, when you know with all these new generations where we are able to address this, where we're able to say, okay, you've got these things going on, this is how you treat them, and that's what they do. It will be interesting to see what happens for them in the future. Absolutely. So um, I want to, you know, not keep people on too long. And is there any questions? I, I don't think I am getting questions um, streamed to me. So it's on your so, side. Yeah, so there's certain uh, certain platforms cannot post live questions, but mm -hmm. in case you are posting questions and they're not popping up right now, we will see mm -hmm. them after and we will be able to reply to your questions um, under the live stream. So, yeah, don't worry. Your, your question will definitely okay. get answered. Um, but, you know... Um, I, I mean, some of the, the usual questions I get asked about air quality is the importance of AMH, which mm. we address. Also taking melatonin. Um, mm -hmm. so okay, yes, I'm interested. What, what? Melatonin can be, you know, very useful. Again, in three months, I wouldn't take it for more than three months because your body makes um, steroid hormones in three-month batches. So I would be focusing on that. Uh, time period, but don't take it if you have any antibodies or thyroid antibodies because it can actually um, have the opposite effect. So, um, but melatonin too, you know, different women react differently to it. Some develop um, sort of more drowsiness, sleepiness during the day. Others can see weight gain. So again, it just depends. Each Each person reacts differently. And that's why well, I know people want formulas and recipes and just mm -hmm. tell you what to do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it works for some, but then there are a lot of people who it doesn't um, really look for. Ah, there we go. There's one question. Okay. Come in. So I have it I, on my side too, if you want me to. Oh, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I'm just going to say um, I can only see Facebook users, so I can't address you by your name. If you look at the PS, um, under the description for this live, mm -hmm. um, if you click on the link, you can um, activate StreamYard and then you can enter your name and then it'll change um, just from Facebook user to your name. So I can address you by your name. Uh, in any case, I see your question. Thank you very much. So uh, the question is, if we are looking for natural fertility, um, what is the best protocol to follow and for how long? Supplements and herbs. Um, so. Thank you for your question. Natural fertility is sort of very broad um, concept. And, you know, the best protocol to follow is the protocol that is tailored to your individual needs. So, for example, in our program, there is a questionnaire with 150 questions that you fill out prior to speaking to your um, natural fertility specialist or your coach, and you can also upload all of your old test results that will be looked at and analyzed prior to speaking to you. And then during the initial consultation, which goes for 60 minutes, 50 to 60 minutes, this is all discussed. So all of the areas which need addressing will be identified and um, you will be given a protocol that is tailored to your individual needs, which will include um, prescription for supplements and herbs, additional tests just to clarify, you know, what's missing or if in your questionnaire there are certain areas that seem like this organ or system is not functioning as well as it should, we better investigate that. There will be recommendation to do those tests. How long you do it for? The minimum time for the supplements is around four months or 120 days because that's that maturation window. Uh, where the egg's maturing from its primordial form to the form that you ovulate it in. But it could, if you're dealing with Im immune issues, with autoimmune issues, then it can be a three to six month protocol because the body makes antibodies in three to six month batches. So the natural approach means that you are working with body's own natural cycles. So for example, um, if you're treating thyroid, you need to give it at least eight weeks to see a change because that's, again, the cycle in which the body is going to make new batch of thyroid hormones. Um, and again, the supplement and herbs, there will be 
tailored to your individual needs. And, you know, while you may have five women presenting with poor egg quality, the treatment protocol may be very different for each because the cause for each is different. For one, it could be heavy metal toxicity. For the other, nutrient deficiency. For the third one, it could be um, a chronic uh, infection that she wasn't really aware of or was, but was never able to treat it properly. For the fourth one, it could be something in her diet that is completely you know, disrupting the whole process or something in her environment that she's coming into contact with. And for the fifth one is genetic polymorphisms, where she unfortunately just inherited all of the um, polymorphisms which are not helping fertility and are predisposing her to miscarriages. So addressing that is what gets her egg quality right. So this is why, you know, there's not just one supplement. Um, while there are certain supplements that we use in the background to form a good foundation to make sure there is vitamin A, there's CoQ10, vitamin D, vitamin E, on top of that, you're doing all the finer work, the more detailed work that's addressing specific needs um, of that particular case. I hope that answers your question. I'm sorry, I can't type um, in here so that you um, see my comment on Facebook in live time. Are there any other okay. questions? If there's okay, ask a, a quick question, Eva, about... Yeah. Um, uh, I know that there's not a one-size-fits-all diet in, in any regard, but, you know, um, there's a lot of talk about the Mediterranean diet, and in, in, in all regards, it seems very healthy, like good fats and fruits and vegetables, but there's a lot of kind of back and forth about grains, grains being, um, you know, for many, many years, whole, whole grains are very healthy. And now it's like, oh, whole grains can be very inflammatory. So what's your view on it? Do you eliminate grains or um, how do you kind of approach that? Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, that kind of all goes back to the lectin. Um, lectin theory and Dr. Gundry's work. Um, and I think um, you know, for some people, there, there may be some merit in that. Um, I definitely think staying away from gluten and gluten containing grains um, is very beneficial. In any case, you should get a food intolerance test just to see mm -hmm. um, if that's what's going on for you. But I, I, I don't think we were designed to eliminate whole you know, groups of food, because we are omnivores at the end of the day. We, we evolved over centuries eating everything that we could ingest, I guess, uh, apart from other humans. And we know some tribes even did that. So, um, and now the newer studies are showing that the microbiome needs that diversity if you exclude the grains and all the complex carbs that you're getting with grains mm -hmm. you are not able to feed certain populations of bacteria that you need for a healthy microbiome so if you're just eating meat you know if you're eating diet that's high in protein but very low in carbs low mm -hmm. in fruits low in veg that's not good for a microbiome and you know the the whole terrain theory is now gaining more traction that it's the terrain that you have that's protecting you from the diseases and it's also terrain that's supporting fertility or not so you know i i, I think diet has become extremely confusing subject even when i speak mm -hmm. to my colleagues you know people are scratching their heads and going okay <laughs> which one is it because there's so many theories and there's so so many um you know different opinions and some diets work for some people and some people are able to lose weight on certain diets but the question is is it good long term and i don't think anything that's highly restrictive of any food group is good for you long term um and that's that's just my my view and i think your body is constantly changing it's interacting with the internal and external environment um and you know if you need to go on a certain diet or eliminate certain foods because that's what your food intolerance report shows you do that but you do that for a short period of time 
um, and then you mix it up again. And I think it's important to do that um, unless you're highly allergic to something in particular. Okay, well, I like that. Thank you so much. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're kind of at, at, out of time here unless another question pops up in the next uh, few seconds, but this will be, um, this replay will be um, on Facebook and, and YouTube. You can watch yes. it and okay. You can watch it. You can still post your questions after the live. Your questions will be um, seen by me and our coaches and by Charlene. And uh, we will make sure that we answer all of your questions. And thank you so much for watching. And thank you, Charlene, okay. for joining. Thank you, Eva. Thank you so much. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thank bye, bye everyone. Bye.